San or Bushmen are the original healers of Southern Africa. San knowledge of this region's medicinal and nutritional plants represents the accumulated wisdom of thousands of years. But in the modern world, San culture, like that of their pastoralist Nama cousins, is in danger of vanishing forever. As part of a drive to reclaim their culture, San and Nama healers and youth joined support organizations for a plant knowledge workshop at the beautiful Kai Kari game farm near Dakar in Botswana. Kai Kari is owned by San Community Trusts and lies at the heart of San cultural renewal in Southern Africa. It's not a, a new thing for us, the San people, to meet coming from different countries, coming and sharing knowledge. It's a thing that has happened even before. Our forefathers, for example, Namibia and Angola, they used to come to, uh, to Botswana to visit their families in Botswana, seeing what, what resources they have there, uh, what are they eating, what, what are the problems that they are having there. When the border was declared to divide uh, countries, then the, the movement was stopped. The elder had the the Arikeners met the hood men say, "Khan in the hood, some cake, in the hood can some do." And the salwak sin out there, a young kener salwak so hood yes, and they sal be hantur yes. No, vandag alma vad no, they hood ken alas no vandag weg. And that well, krage, ons moet nog van dit nog leer om te ken. So we decided to join forces bringing people from different approaches and countries and, and, and even language groups together to discuss the approaches that they're taking in integrating plants into community conservation and into their own quest for better livelihoods. As part of our land, livelihood and heritage work, we've been uh, trying to document uh, plants and the knowledge that the sun people that we're working with know about the plants. As you know, we now with a very small group of people who know So this is the reason that it's a very important thing for the young people to learn from the young people. The young generations are into schools and the old people are dying. So it is this fear that um, in the end we won't have any knowledge of plants. The government, I say, we must now the hospital, we must be the sick cry, then we the fat and gaan, we be the the hospital. That word must not be broken, but the reason is for the bushman's name. But we must make. I the government says we must make. Our medicines are very good and they are of the great value if you have compared it to these ones we are getting from the hospitals because our medicines like I understand they are very fresh from the ground. Kaiche, an elderly sand healer from Dakar, took delegates on a field walk to introduce them to local sand medicinal plants. Yeah. Trekan, <laughs> The remarkable Hudia succulent is a San and Nama traditional medicine that brings the ownership of traditional plant knowledge into sharp focus. This plant has been used by our forefathers to suppress thirst and hunger during their long hunting expeditions. South African government scientists realized that Hudia had powerful properties. They took it to the marketplace without consulting the San. They sold it to pharmaceutical multinationals as a lucrative anti-obesity wonder drug. They assumed in a newspaper article that the Bushmen were extinct of the face of the earth. And that is how we began 
to say, hold on, we are not really extinct, we are here. And we, we, we began to talk about now access and benefit sharing. Eventually, SAN organizations negotiated royalty payments from Hudia producers. Yeah, the SAN have to say thank you that they were organized institutionally through an organization that is called BIMSA, of which I'm representing today. So it created a very powerful platform uh, wherein SAN could stand and really speak with a common voice and WIMSA through its grassroots uh, structures uh, disseminated money back to the communities, mainly for socio-political empowerment. Devil's Claw is one traditional medicine that earns revenues for SAN communities. Devil's Claw was plundered from SAN lands in Namibia until SAN communities took control of this resource. There were cars coming in from outside here, from this side, in, into the area, uh, telling the local people, uh, we need a devil's claw because we want to go and do it at our home. So it was painful. They have something like more than, uh, I think it was 20 tons of uh, devil's claw out from the area. When the conservancy was gazetted and it was official, a legal institution, we said, so, well, sorry, we are going to implement a payment system. We, we negotiate on a, on, on, on a best price, which is 20, 20, $23 per kg to 800 uh, send local people to harvest the devil's claw. Most of the people that are jobless, they don't have any work, they don't have any money to pay for the school fees. So it's how the conservancy was trying to at least provide some income for them to pay for the, for, for the children.